And at the end of this video, I have a very important announcement about Scotty Dog Quilt Retreats. So stay tuned for that at the end. Welcome to my channel, The Crafty Traveler. My name is Lonnie, and I'm a retired part-time solo traveler. I love to camp and travel. I travel with my little schnauzer Snickers in my Mini Winnie, and I tow my Honda. We love to go to the desert in the winter, the mountains in the summer, and the seashore whenever we can. I enjoy doing sewing crafts and making quilts. I also go to retreats and quilt shows. I also like to paint and sometimes I show these on my videos. I'm a Harvest Host and Boondocker Welcome member. Come along and watch our adventures and see where we go. Give me a thumbs up, comment, share, and subscribe. Stay crafty smart, creative, and safe, and thanks for watching. Good morning, crafty travelers. It's Lonnie. I'm on another little adventure. I'm at the Scotty Dog Quilt Retreat up in Lolita, California which is just a little south of Fortuna, California. I did arrive yesterday and uh, met up with my friend Kathleen and Kelly. We are all here in the parking lot of the casino, the Bear River Casino, in our motorhomes. Today is October the 6th and this is the view out my door this morning over this beautiful valley and you can even see the river down there a little bit. There is some traffic noise right now, but last night I did not hear a thing. Isn't that gorgeous down there? And on the other side, back over there, there's a little fog bank. That is the ocean. So we are here until Sunday. We're here for three nights. This is where we're parked. There's Kathleen's RV. There's my Mini Winnie, and there's Kelly's. And there's another RV back behind us. I don't think it's part of our group. And I parked my car right there. So we're all here together. That is the Bear River Casino and Hotel, right across the road. And we can get in through the parking garage and up the elevator. We usually park on the other side of the hotel at least I did last October, and Kelly and Kathleen did in March when I was in Baja. But Saturday, they're having a big taco event, and they're going to have lots of food trucks. So they didn't want us to park over there. So we are over here. And we are over here in this parking lot across the street. I don't know if you can notice, but it slopes a little bit. And we all had to build up our passenger side tires to get level. I was able to get pretty level with just one block of wood under my front tire and under each of the back tires on the passenger side. It's not perfectly level but the refrigerator does work on propane and that was my only concern. Okay I'm gonna head into the building and meet up with a group of sewing ladies and I'll show you what's there. Walking through the lobby to get to the ballroom where the sewing room is all set up. We were actually here last night and the casino is that way and the gift shop is that way and here we are. This is the sewing room. Everybody's, not everybody's here yet. They're all out to breakfast or something. There's Kelly. This is the pattern we're working on. This is the blue color called Deep Woods, designed by Liz Adams. Here's a table runner. This is the same pattern, but in different colors fabric. A lot of us are doing the same pattern, but in different fabrics. This is Brenda Lou. Remember when I was in Minnesota, I visited 
and there's Liz, and there's a video about Liz and her new basement, and Brenda Lou just showed me this really cute little mug rug. Yes. My with Scotty dogs on someone, it. Beautiful. Someone made that for you. Oh, someone made it for you. Well, that's wonderful. Beautiful. This is the machine that Liz uses to cut our fabric. And I'll show you what it looks like all cut. This is my fabric. So this machine with her dye cuts all of these different shapes. And then you can see I have a lot of fabric stacked up. So... I will mix and match these. This is Liz Adams, and you all know Liz because I've done multiple videos. And she is in the process of cutting fabric using this machine. Now, Liz, what is the name of this machine? Uh, this is an AccuCut. A lot of people know it as the company is AccuQuilt, but they were AccuCut before AccuQuilt. This is their brand mark machine, a little more industrial than the average. Uh, Accu quilt machine. So this is the, like a studio machine, yep. is that right? Yes. Industrial. It's a little thicker. Um, this cuts up to ten layers at a time. Nice. And you have to hand crank this. Yep. And you can. Uh, it's you can use bigger dies. There's a lot more options. Oh, that's cool. And we have most of our dies custom made by them. We work with them too. The dye that is the most efficient way to cut. We don't want to waste any fabric. Exactly. So. And I don't know if you all can see this die. But it is the triangles we're working on. Here, let me show you. Yeah, so she's going to put 10 layers of fabric. Oh, okay, there you go. There's the, the back. Tree, the bottom of the tree, and then you can see right there what it right, looks like when it's Right, right. So she's, she's cutting up to 10 layers of fabric. Now, I have an AccuGo, which is an electric, and I can cut up to six layers uh, on my machine at home. And this machine is used for hours every single day, so it gets a, it needs to be heavy duty. It gets a lot of use. We cut kits to sell, um, and we we are cutting constantly. So we go through these machines. They wear out. We get new ones. We replace all the parts. I remember you had this machine years ago, and you brought it to retreats when yeah. you lived here. Well, and that not we've replaced it many times over. Since yeah, then. and I I still have pieces I've cut that I haven't sewn together. <laughs> So she's cranking the machine. She has a piece of plexiglass over the top. That keeps things in place. Right. This machine, uh, normally you have a special table. I'm going to help. And yeah. it doesn't shift. It doesn't shift. So I'm... She has cut 10 layers of fabric. And how many blocks are you getting? Uh, 20 blocks at a time. 20 blocks at a time. So for a, this quilt here that has 56 blocks in it, we just three passes. Okay. Okay. And the other colorful one's a little larger, right? 90 blocks, no borders. Same 90. size, but we did 90 blocks without borders. Okay, good. So occasionally where the dyes meet up, you might snip a little snip. So she's trimming off threads that may not have been cut with the machine. Usually there's just one spot, but we've been using this a lot for the last couple of days. So right. You have to clean out the little crevices yeah, and often. Guy, um, we've never had one that had so many little pieces in there. This one's been a little finicky with that. So yeah. We'll probably work on that and get that fixed up. Right. Okay. That's going to be a beautiful quilt. Now the so the this person is, who this is twenty blocks right here. The person who owns that has got to mix them up, right? Yep. Yeah. They'll shuffle their She'll deck. shuffle your deck and mix them up, so you get different sides and bottoms and things that go with it. All right. And she's got a few stacks to go here. Thank you, Liz. Appreciate it. So Chris Sessa of Country Quilts and Fabrics in Willits has our store here this time. I think she brought more than half the store with her. She's got lots of patterns and pens and fabric and irons. Oh, I gotta have one of these squirter bottles. I've seen those squirter bottles. I've seen them on my painting channels. So this is what Chris's store looks like up here at our quilt retreat. She has some wonderful things, beautiful things. And it's so well lit. 
and pretty. This is like eye candy to me. And it's non-fattening. Oh, these are little kits. Patterns and kits. There's Kathleen. And we have ironing station set up. And this is the sewing room. We have 67 ladies and their sewing machines working on the tree quilt or whatever they want. Joyce has my sticker on her cup. I gave her this sticker like a year ago and she still has it on her cup. Thank you, Joyce. Wave. You're on video. <laughs> Uh, we're, a group of us are going to lunch here at the Fernbridge Cafe and Coffee Barn. I love this restaurant. I haven't been here for a while. The lady who owns it, she and her husband have a cattle ranch close by, and all their beef is from their cattle ranch. So, going in for lunch. After a wonderful meal, sorry I didn't get pictures of the meal, we are in Ferndale going into the Stitch Fabric Store. I've done videos on this fabric store in the past. I'll try and remember to link them. Everybody's got their Halloween fabric out and fall fabrics. And this is the Stitch Fabric Store in Ferndale, California. Now we're going into the Springville Quilt Farm Store in Fortuna, California. This is a new store to me, but an old location. There used to be another store here by a different name. So we're going to go in and see what we find. Look at all this eye candy. There is their store. New store to me. Beautiful. <laughs> this is Jan, and she owns the Springville Quilt Barn. Okay, and you've been here in this store for two years, you said. Yes, I have. In Fortuna. And before that, did you have it at your location, at your home? or In the top of my barn, and for about six years. And so that's where the name came from. Yeah. Springville actually came from, that's the original name of Fortuna. And I had my inventory in a barn so I just put it together. Oh very good and why did you want to open a store? I opened a store because I needed a place for my inventory when we sold our house. <laughs> <laughs> good reason. <laughs> kind of happened. Good and, and it's all I've, been good for you. It has been good. That's fabulous. This is the first time I've been here because I wasn't last year you said in October you had a flood. Yes. So it was closed while we were here. But yeah. uh, okay, well, I appreciate it. And I've got some fabric here on the table for her to cut with a beautiful cactus pattern. <laughs> and it's a painted cactus. So I can also use this as one of my watercolor designs. All right. Well, thank you for coming in. Thank you, Jan. Appreciate it. Now we're going into Ocean Waves Fabrics and Gifts. This is a well-established store we've been to many times every time we come here. It's in this really neat older house. And we are now in Eureka on V Street. 305 V Street. Here we go. This is Yara and Sarah. And they're the owners of Ocean Wave Quilting in Eureka. How long have you owned the store, ladies? 
Uh, I've owned it for 12. Okay. And that was my trusty sidekick. That's right. <laughs> And they have these beautiful hat. Did you make the hat? I did. Fabulous. <laughs> Absolutely fabulous. And so um, I'm going to look over the store and buy some stuff. All right. Okay. Thank you. Ooh, they just told me we get 20% off anything we buy. So I'm in trouble. This house has num a numerous little rooms that are all full of fun fabric and things to buy. I think I did a video on this a number of years ago with the previous owner. Oh, the batiks. I love the batiks. They're my favorite. Oh, look at these beautiful panels. They look like photographs. And we have another little room over here. There's some more, some more fabrics. I go absolutely crazy in these stores. Oh, look at that beautiful quilt with all those fall colors. And she has fabric and she has patterns and beautiful quilts. I just looked out my door of the RV and saw this gorgeous sunset looking out over the valley and out to the ocean. Look at those colors. Good morning, everyone. Let's see what it looks like outside today. Ooh, there's a little fog down there by the river. There's a river down there that floats out to the ocean. Can't really see that. But on the other side of the RV, it's clearing. So it's going to be a beautiful day again today. Good morning, Crafty Travelers. It's Lonnie. Today is Saturday, October the 7th, 2023, and I am still in Lolita, California at the Scotty Dog Quilt Retreat. I'm all ready to go, and I'm headed up to the sewing room. So, come along. There's my first block, finally done. Here's all my fabrics. I gotta put them together and make the trees. Here's my sewing station. They have coffee, tea, and water here for us. I gotta get sewing. <laughs> this is Chris, and she's doing a demonstration on the stripology ruler. This is the big stripology ruler, and there's a lot of different sizes. Oh. So they're up there at my shop, and I'm happy to show them to you. This is the XL, and it is um, 20 inches. You get 20 inches of slots. And so what it is, inside this template, you have slots that you run your rotary cutter through, and it's in half-inch increments. And you might say, well, what if I want to make a quarter inch cut? There is a chart um, that would show you the cuts that you would make to make quarter inch cuts. But I'm not going to go into that just for time's sake. So um, what do you, I use this for? Just about everything. Um, if I need two and a half inch strips for my binding, because that's what I like to do, I um, use that every time. So what you do is you grab your fold. If you have a width of fabric, you, I place it on a line. Get it straight against that line. Pull your selvages up in half. And then line up this bottom one with another line. So you have a line up here. Usually I use a ruler to hold it down up here on top just for, there you go. Um, I can get it pretty close. So you can see I got it straight here and I have it straight down here. So now I grab my stripology ruler and down here there's um, black lines and white lines. Which one you use is the one that's easiest for your eye to see. Honestly, um, that's how I do it. There's probably a better, I don't know, explanation or tutorial, but that's what I do. 
So if I have a dark fabric, I use the white line. If I have a light fabric, I use the dark line because I can see it better. So I line up my zero, on, in this case, line all the way across my fold. And when I look up here across the top, I can see that my fold perfectly matches a line up here on top. So why is that important? So that way when I cut a strip, I won't get any elbows at all, ever. So, and then down here on the bottom of the stripology rulers, you have some, you have your zero through 20, but you also have half inch marks in between. Then there's squares, just like any creative grids, if you've seen these before, squares indicate two and a half inch cuts, stars indicate one and a half inch cuts. I know. Didn't know that. So you don't have to do the math. I need two and a half inch strips, I can just hit all the squares. squares. Awesome. So start at the zero. And did you guys see that? Yeah. I hardly yeah. did anything and then the Ruler didn't even move. Oh, yeah. Well, that yeah. just makes everything so easy. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. I just cut binding for a full quilt. Oh. Fabulous. Sullivan was the first one to finish her quilt top. Not the first one. So oh. Yesterday. Oh, really? Okay. Well, it's beautiful. <laughs> All right. There's Kelly's wall hanging. A Christmas, Christmas wall hanging. Everybody's going to get seasick now. <laughs> it is Sunday, October the 8th, 2023, and this is the last day of the Scotty Dog Quilt Retreat at Bear River Casino in Lolita, California. It's kind of a sad day, so I want to make the best of it. Here, let's look at the view again. This is the view out my door. Earlier, this was all fogged in. I couldn't see down to the road. Now the fog has burned back, but it's still there a little bit. And can't see the ocean this morning. All right, headed up to the sewing room. The eel, the eel is out. Yeah. No, he doesn't eat fish. He eats what they put in there. Huh? Yeah. Pretty good. Karen finished her quilt top. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Love the colors. Bye, everybody. Bye. It's been fun. Bye. Bye. A few years ago, I did a video with Brenda Lou and Liz, and they told the whole history of Scotty Dog Quilts, how the retreat started, how their shop started. So I'll post that up here, and you can watch that. It's very interesting. They had their first quilt retreat in the spring of 2001. And my first quilt retreat with them was in the fall of 2002. I've missed a few, probably four or five, due to trips or family uh, things, but I've been to lots of them. <laughs> and they uh, have always been a lot of fun. You meet new people. I now have many friends that come. We cover almost two tables worth length of friends from 
Mendocino County and we've always had a wonderful time. We've been in numerous different locations and stayed at different hotels. And last October when I was here, because I had the motorhome, I was able to park in the casino parking lot as well as this retreat. Well, here's the big announcement. Liz and Brenda told us that this will be the last retreat in Humboldt County, and in fact, in California. They said that it's just too expensive to rent the room and plan the retreat here at the casino, and they have looked and called around at other places, and the price would just be too expensive for all of us. So they're moving the retreats to Las Vegas. The next retreat will be in April at the Tuscany Resort Hotel off the Strip in Las Vegas, Nevada. We are all very sad and many of us say that we probably will never go. I'm going to say I most likely won't go. Brenda and, and Liz said they would still be planning on cruises. I've been on three cruises with them. I went to Mexico, I did a New England cruise with them, and I also did a Italy and Greece trip and cruise with them. And they were so much fun. So I might be able to go on a cruise with them. However, if you are interested in going to a Scotty Dog retreat in Las Vegas, go to the scottydog.com website and look up the information. Here's the flyer they gave us. And I'm sure you will have a fabulous time. That's the big announcement. And um, most of us are very sad about it. I wish Liz and Brenda all the success that they deserve. And I'm sure their retreats will be fabulous. If you like this video, other than the announcement, give me a thumbs up, comment, share, and subscribe. Stay crafty, smart, creative, and safe when at a Scotty Dog Retreat, wherever it might be. Thanks for watching.